Over the course of the war in Ukraine, the Allied countries have transferred nearly 50 aid packages. Hundreds of thousands of missiles and shells, millions of cartridges, grenades, and medicine, and most importantly, over 4,000 pieces of various equipment that have turned the tide in the battle. And yet I wonder what technology has been transferred the most. Which country has been Ukraine's biggest partner, and how much did all this support cost? You're about to find out all this and more, but in the meantime, subscribe to the channel. The first delivery of weapons to Ukraine took place in March 2022 when 19 countries, led by the United States, allocated more than $2 billion to provide military equipment. Among these were T-72 tanks, which the Ukrainian military was already familiar with. But then more interesting specimens arrived, such as the Abrams and Challenger, costing a total of $580 million to transfer. Those two vehicles represent the backbone of their respective countries' combat power and support. I wasn't scared at all or threatened by any other vehicle on the battlefield. Both are equipped with powerful 120mm cannons and automatic loading. They can destroy any land-based enemy in a matter of seconds, but they also have differences. The Abrams developers focused on maneuverability and offensive features. The tank was given the unique ability to fire not just shells, but even a smaller version of Excalibur guided missiles with a range of 5 miles, giving it the longest strike range of any tank in the world. The primary weapon system for the M1A2 Abrams tank is the 120mm smoothbore cannon. You also have a 240 coaxial machine gun located in the gunner's seat. Right below that, you have the gunner's auxiliary sight. And above that, you have the gunner's primary sight and thermal view. The Challenger 2, in turn, is like a fortress on tracks, because it's the most well-protected tank in the world. This vehicle has several levels of protection and can withstand direct hits from anti-tank shells, intercept missiles, and even defend against nuclear weapons. The British Army is visionary when it comes to the use of the tank. About 520 heavy tanks were transferred to Ukraine in total. That's a combined weight of 73 million pounds. It doesn't feel like you're driving 60 tons worth of, of metal. It, it doesn't feel that heavy. If you were to line the tanks up side by side, they take up most of O'Hare Airport, which is the largest in the United States. The incredible power of the tanks has really affected the course of the battle, but without reliable cover, they wouldn't have been able to do anything. So all the more amazing that the most powerful Paladin artillery howitzers were handed over along with the tanks. First of all, the numbers are striking. 320 such systems at a total cost of $5.8 billion. The M109A6 Paladin is an American self-propelled howitzer currently in service with the United States that's also gained a reputation in many other countries. That's because it's one of the most powerful of its kind in the world. So this thing can sit in the fight a lot longer. The Paladin can fire up to a distance of 25 miles using GPS guidance and inertial navigation. Each volley obliterates the enemy with a crushing blow that shatters enemy equipment into pieces. Meanwhile, the Paladin itself is far out of reach. The HIMARS rocket system works in a similar way. I think everyone saw it in action when every Russian news outlet was showing the destroyed bridge in Crimea. Yeah, they just got a fire one ready, fire command. Uh, so as soon as they moved out from the high point to the firing point, we'll shoot that rocket and uh, get steel on target. The HIMARS also has the longest range artillery strike in the world capable of attacking up to 186 miles away. Just one of these machines cost $3.5 million, and that includes the $2.3 million for the MGM-140 Attackums projectile that destroyed the aforementioned bridge. You can understand that HIMARS shells are a huge part of the total cost. However, in addition to its interesting price, the complex can also be transported by military aircraft, making it highly mobile. Why not have the HIMARS rain down on the enemy's head from above? That would be a breathtaking thing to see. If you were to gather all the Paladins, HIMARS, and other howitzers that were transferred to Ukraine and make a tower out of them, it would reach a mile into the sky. That's twice as high as the height of the Burj Khalifa. I think you can understand that the scale of all this newly arrived weaponry has made it possible to push the enemy back many miles. The aggressor quickly realized that it had to change tactics and began using their aircraft because Ukraine had nothing to defend itself with. But the Allies saw this coming, and immediately after they sent the howitzers, more than 120 fighters and bombers were handed over to Ukraine. 
This aviation aid package came at a total cost of $9 billion. Just imagine how much that is. Of course, a special contribution was made by America's F-16s. There's a reason this aircraft has defended the President of the United States since its inception, and now it'll defend the Ukrainian people. It's the best flying aircraft I've had the opportunity to fly. While all Ukraine had in its aviation arsenal were some old MiGs, this powerful addition has radically changed the situation. The F-16 Fighting Falcon is an advanced fighter capable of destroying both enemy aircraft and corresponding ground equipment. But these capabilities come at a steep price. And I'm not talking about money. Flying an F-16 at top speed can have serious effects on the average person's health. Ten times the force of gravity is no joke. If a pilot isn't prepared for such a load, not only may they experience severe pain, but they could also die. Visual distortion, dizziness, damage to internal organs, and a complete loss of consciousness. That's what awaits an unprepared pilot. This is why Ukrainian fighters were sent to train in the USA a few months ago, where they experienced all the wonders of controlling the F-16, but its power doesn't stop there. The F-16 Fighting Falcon is a truly amazing weapon that's capable of turning the tide of war. Plus, it's also the main opponent of Russia's MiGs. And it has a significant amount of weapons carrying and payload capability. The flight speed of the F-16 is 1,500 miles per hour, with a range of 2,600 miles. That's like flying the entire width of Ukraine three times in two hours. This is the F-110 GE engine found the F-16 Flying Falcon. The MiG, in turn, has about the same speed but only a third of the flight range, which is disastrous. Working in tandem with artillery, the fighters have driven the enemy even further back, but then Moscow uses its trump card – huge missile strikes. Something had to be done, and fast, so a U.S. supply of air defense systems came just in time. These included the legendary NASAMs. The price of one of these is $65 million, and as many as 90 of them were transferred. This medium-range anti-aircraft missile system, developed in Norway with the assistance of the United States, has been given the nickname Defender of Kings due to its effectiveness in protecting the White House. The NASAMS is very versatile. It can be used in a variety of conditions and tasks, and can be deployed to urban areas, mountain peaks, or even ships. In addition, the NASAMS uses some of the most advanced technology. For example, it doesn't need an additional radar because it can already detect targets up to 47 miles away on its own. One more cool fact? This system, like a real Terminator, can continue to operate even if half of it's been blown off. It's such a versatile defensive fighter, and there are now over a hundred of them in Ukraine. If you were to use all the NASAMs at the same time, they can protect 110,000 square miles. That's nearly half of Ukraine. It's obvious now why the enemy stopped flying its fighters and retreated to remote positions. For Ukraine's fighters, this is a great opportunity to launch a counteroffensive, and that's where fast and powerful infantry vehicles will come in handy. This is exactly the technology that was transferred in one of the latest assistance packages. But you won't believe exactly how many of them were supplied. More than 1,100 armored personnel carriers, 925 mine-protected transport vehicles, and 1,500 Humvee mobile infantry vehicles. The Humvee is a multi-purpose vehicle, all-terrain, rough terrain, and around about now, we're getting ready to go on a ride. This assistance amounted to a total cost of $6.3 billion, and the Allies obviously won't be stopping there. If you put all 3,500 vehicles in one lane, you'd get a 12-mile-long traffic jam. I don't think you'd want to be in one of these when you're in a hurry to get to work. One of the most remarkable of these units is the American Bradley. At a speed of 44 miles per hour, this beauty zooms toward victory, destroying the enemy with its high-speed cannon, mortars, and machine guns. Plus, the fighters inside will remain safe because this mini-tank can survive landmine explosions and even a direct hit from a tank. In addition, the Bradley was the first infantry fighting vehicle to be equipped with an automatic fire control system, allowing the crew to coordinate more effectively. This has made the vehicle more efficient on the battlefield and has made it safer for the crew and infantry. Now we can see how this large-scale aid to Ukraine has been provided by Allied countries. Hundreds of tanks, thousands of infantry fighting vehicles, aircraft, air defense, and artillery. But how much did all this cost? Well, 
$55 billion, and that's just in the last year. The United States is the leading sponsor with $20 billion contributed. It should be clear now how invested the allied countries are in making sure peace reigns on Ukrainian soil. And with that, this video's come to an end. Thanks for watching all the way through. We'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. Have a great day, everyone. See you soon.